If you want to have a bit of fun later on when you're at home, get on the internet and search all the different hackers that have happened. Uh, there's various ones where they've ended up, there's now a, 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 in the RFU laws, the opposition aren't allowed to move any closer than a measured distance because they have in the past where they've done the hacker, the opposition have gone, all right, let's go, and they've had a brawl before the game has started. <laughs> And rumour has it, when uh, some of you, uh, if, it, if you're not interested in rugby, just go to sleep for the next minute while I tell this story. But if you like rugby, this is great. When England played uh, New Zealand in the World Cup, when Will Carling was playing and the Underwood brothers were playing, they did the hacker, and there was a famous New Zealander called Jonah Lomu playing, who, if you can remember his size, he was my height, my weight, and he used to run the 100 metres in 10.5. All right, so that's 18 and a half stone in running at you the size of me. It's like a terrifying individual. And Tony Underwood thought it'd be a great time during the hacker to wink at him. <laughs> you can imagine how that went down. Do the search later on the internet and watch, because apparently Lomu went up to the captain and went, he winked at me, give me the ball. And within the first two minutes, they gave him the ball, and basically Jonah Lomu ran him over. And it, it, literally, if you see it later, you'll go, <laughs> he did, didn't he? Uh, because he didn't respect. But that is what the hacker is. It's all the way, it's endemic. When we went 10 years ago to New Zealand, that is the thing. That is their thing, the Maori culture and the, the warrior amongst them. It's like the Shema to the Jewish people. Interestingly enough, the first word, did anybody see the, the translation, what the first word of the hacker was, the guy who called it? Listen, it's the same as in the Shema. Hear, hear, O Israel. Heed, hear what I'm about to say. This is the Shema. It's the Jewish hacker. Why is it, why is it that in, in the words of the Shema, that hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one? Why is that important? Remember a few weeks ago when we talked about creation? All these different gods that are around in the ancient Near East. But the people of God, the Jewish people, there's one God. He doesn't need light. He is, doesn't worship light. He creates it. There isn't these many hundreds of gods around that are all kind of failed gods, lesser gods. There's just one God. And he is one. That's why it's important. That's why in the Shema, it is so all the way through Jewish people. Shema Israel Adonai Elianu Adonai Echad. At the end of World War II, there was uh, an international committee of, of people from different countries being chaired by various rabbis, where they tried to find all the orphans that were made because of the Holocaust. They tried to find uh, the, the orphans and try and put them together with, with their families or distant relatives. And as you can imagine, it was a tortuous task. And this rabbi went round to all these different orphanages all the way around Europe, and he struggled to... Uh, find these because actually some of them didn't have names they didn't have any kind of record of who they were but at one point he went into a dormitory that was in a convent run by some nuns and this rabbi walks in and starts singing I'm not going to sing the Shema don't panic um, started sing it, singing the Shema and all of a sudden these little infant kids started joining in who had a memory of the Shema in their lives and that's why if you read on in that Deuteronomy passage, it talks about discussing it with your children and imprinting it on your arms and on your heads. That's what makes it so important. So when he walked into the, the, these orphanages, he started saying, Shema Israel Adonai Elianu Adonai Echad. These little children started joining in. This is the importance of worship. It is central to our lives. If you take a Christian and break them in half, have they got worship throughout the whole thing? Our worship is our hacker. In worship, we, if we go back to the Mark passage, Mark chapter 12, if we carry on reading in the passage, in worship of this one God, we have a love relationship. Let's see, verse 30. Love the Lord your God with your heart, with your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. It kind of covers all the corners, doesn't it? Unless you're kind of left in any doubt, your whole person is an act 
of worship. Love the Lord your God with your whole heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love languages, love relationships. Interestingly enough, there's three different, well, there's at least three, there's probably a few more uh, 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 words for love in Hebrew. There's dod, which is like the kind of physical expression of, of love. There's ahava, which is like a soulmate. And there's raya, which is companionship. Three different words, three different expressions of love, and three different, wor- three different ways of unpacking your love for God. So we have love, Lord your God. God is one. Love the Lord your God with your whole heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And then we have one which I was preaching on this morning. If we go to Leviticus chapter 19 on page 121, we have this bit that says, and love your neighbor. Again, this isn't a new thing. This was Jesus refocusing a a, a directive, a commandment from the Old Testament. And this is where it comes from. Again, a wonderfully quite amusing title for Leviticus 19, Various Laws. Okay, great. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, Leviticus 19, this is where Jesus got the love your neighbor. Leviticus 19, verse 9. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. And all the way through, this is an unpacking of, okay, if you love God, this is what we're going to look for. We're going to look for, uh, a, a le- for for you to leave bits of the harvest for the poor and the alien. Alien, it doesn't mean kind of three-armed things with blue heads. Alien as in people who don't come from here. So how relevant is this to us today? Mm, let me think. <laughs> it's actually very relevant. And the thing about gleaning and not going to the edges of your field... That is a practice outlined in the Old Testament where it's an odd corner, so let's just leave it. Let the poor have it. Let the needy have it. This is your neighbor, anybody who is in need. Leviticus 19, an unpacking of love your neighbor. And then we get this amazing bit that's tagged on to the end. Let's jump back to the Mark passage. Mark chapter 12, right at the end, and it says... Love your neighbor as yourself. That probably is the hardest thing for us to do nowadays. To love your neighbor, to a certain extent that's easier. But to love yourself? In an age where self-image is terrible. In an age where we have a prayer almost prophetically kind of done by by Sam a few minutes ago about people who struggle with self-image. And that actually foundational to our worship is a value and a principle of image in the sight of God. Wow. That we love our neighbors as ourselves. How on earth do we come to terms with that? How on earth do we come to terms with that when maybe we have a history of people have told you you're not worth it? Or in an age where we've probably just come through most of the exams that our young people and children have had but actually where worth comes from a piece of paper that you get in the middle of August in an envelope and tells you whether you failed or not. In an age where our value is, is given to us by how much we earn a year or whether we own a house or whether we're married and got kids. To love the Lord your God with your heart, mind, strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. One of the words that came, uh, somebody prayed for me at the start of the service and said, you've got to just do it. Was it do it? It was, don't be afraid to take a risk. And I think one of the biggest challenges here we've got today that we're going to seek a response from is that final bit. That final bit about our self-image. Love the Lord, you've got to be your heart, mind, strength, everything. Love your neighbor. That's unpacked in so many ways. We've got to care for our neighbor. We're going to be out there at the carnival yesterday talking about human trafficking and how appalling that is. 
And we're going to work against that. But we're going to love our neighbor as ourselves. And to some of us, we might really struggle with that. We're going to have a time of response now. And, uh, oh, crumbs running late. Sorry, babbled on too much. Uh, let's stand. And if we can just ask for the band to come up, that would be fantastic. To love your neighbor as yourself. Let's just close our eyes. Um, if you feel like you want to, put your hands out. And we're going to pray that God ministers, ministers to us now over the next few minutes. To love your neighbor as yourself. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord, prompt us. Uh, uh, help us to see that wrapped up in our worship is how you see us and how we see ourselves. <coughs> and Father, as so many of us here are caught up in, 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 a, in a cycle of, of, of being reminded of sin we've done or sin that has been done to us. And Father, I'd like to take this opportunity to just speak over everyone here and say, your sins are forgiven. Whether they be ones you've done yourself, or the, these sins that have been done to you, whether they be wrong words, whether they be physical, whether they be sexual, you are released from that. You are forgiven. Corrie Tan Boom said that Jesus takes your sin, puts it in the deepest sea, and puts up a sign saying, no fishing. Father, I ask it that you will clean our slates, that you will uh, delete all this sin that comes to haunt us and deconstruct us and keep us away from you. Minister to us now in Jesus' name. If you want to have prayer, if you want to have somebody just come and lay hands on you and pray for you uh, during the, the final song or afterwards, I'll just ask you just to raise your hand now. Come, Holy Spirit, minister to us. will be opportunity to talk through uh, post service in the corner off to my right uh, any of the things that have come up during the service through, through the word through the worship just go up and people will more than happy to pray for you you're not making them late for anything take this opportunity now